Hi, in this video we're going to discuss some important properties of the gradient vector. So these will be important when you do application problems relating to the gradient vector. And the other thing that's important to understand is that we will see the gradient vector in this chapter and then we will also see it when we do some other things later. Uh, so we'll exploit some of these properties when we're trying to actually accomplish something else and we'll use the gradient vector to help us accomplish those tasks. So uh, the first one that I've typed here, the geometric dimension of the gradient vector of f is equal to the geometric dimension of the domain of f. So if you think about, say, a function of two variables, f of x, y, provided that that's a differentiable function, the gradient of f is going to be a vector with two components, partial derivative with respect to x and partial derivative with respect to y. And so the domain of the function would be the set of all possible input variables. So in this case, two-dimensional, our domain would be some subset of R2. And our vector here, notice there are two components in that vector. And so that's also in R2. Both of these, the domain and the gradient vector, are both in R2. Similarly, if I have a function of three variables, f of x, y, z, our gradient vector would have three components, and so both the domain of the function and the gradient vector would be in R3. This will be important when you sketch the gradient vector uh, so that you can think about where you want to sketch that. So often we draw the gradient vector on the graph of the level curves. Not always, but usually that's where you'll see a picture of the gradient vector. Okay, this next property here relates the gradient vector to level curves or level surfaces. I have uploaded a proof of this property, at least for level curves, into Canvas, so you can look at that. I'm not going to go through the proof here, but I do just want to talk a little bit about how you might prove something like that. Uh, if I want to show that the gradient vector is normal or perpendicular to a curve, generally what I'm going to do is think about showing that a dot product of that gradient vector and some vector that's along a curve, the dot product of those two vectors would be zero. And what I want to think about here is thinking about a vector that would be along a curve. And so thinking back to what we did in the previous chapter, uh, we were able to parameterize curves by r of t, and then if I find r prime of t, that would be a vector that is tangent to the curve. And so if you could show that the vector tangent to the curve, and when you dot product that with the gradient vector, that that dot product is zero, that would show that those two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Okay, these next four properties here are all kind of related to each other, so I'm actually going to talk about them kind of all together here. Uh, they talk about how the gradient vector is related to maximum and minimum rates of change. So maximum rate of increase for these two properties, and then maximum rate of decrease or we might also call that a minimum rate of increase. So essentially what these are all talking about is maximizing and minimizing the directional derivative of a function at a point. And so you're thinking about what is the direction in which you would maximize or minimize the derivative of a function. And so when you think about directional derivative, uh, that is a gradient vector dot a unit vector. And the geometric definition of a dot product is magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other vector times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Our u vector is a unit vector, so the magnitude of that vector will just be one. So we'll get the magnitude of the gradient vector times cosine theta. And so you can think about that this is going to be maximized when cosine theta is one and that would occur when the angle between the two vectors is zero, or we would be traveling in the direction of the gradient vector so that u and the gradient vector are in the same direction. So that's what these two properties here are about. Uh, the gradient vector is in the direction of the maximum rate of increase, and then also the maximum rate of increase is the magnitude of the gradient vector. When cosine theta is one, we get that the directional derivative is just the magnitude of the gradient vector. And then this expression will be minimized when cosine theta is negative one, 
or when the angle between the two vectors is pi, or 180 degrees, or the vectors are in opposite directions. So the opposite direction of the gradient vector is the direction of maximum rate of decrease, and the minimum value of that directional derivative would be negative 1 times the magnitude of the gradient vector, and since we'd have a negative rate of change, we would talk about that as a maximum rate of decrease or minimum rate of increase for that function. Okay, in the next video, we're going to look at some examples exploiting these properties to understand something about a function.